Yes, Gawa. <laughs> This video shows how to use the sequence table in LogicWorks. Here's a quick preview of the video. First, use the sequence editor to set up each step of the move sequence. Second, confirm operation with the sequence test. And finally, use the motion sequence run AOI to control execution of the sequence through the PLC. Motion sequence edit can be used to change the speed and position of a step, and flags can be used to control sequence timing and branching. For this example, the Sigma logic system is fully functional and can be commanded by the PLC over Ethernet IP. This is the same setup shown in the Quick Start video series. The sequence table allows the user to configure a series of moves directly in the Sigma logic instead of sequencing the motion axis move instructions within the ladder environment of RS logics. First, power up and connect with LogicWorks. Start a new project, connect, and to verify the current configuration, use receive, receive from Sigma logic axis. Continue without saving the untitled project. After upload, choose save now, and name it Sequence Table Basic. Under Configure, Units, confirm this example is load type linear, working in units of millimeter with a 10 millimeter screw. Options shows hardware over travels are used. Under Monitor, there are no active alarms and the actuator is at the zero position. Under Test Run, Motor Test, the zero position can be set if homing is not yet implemented. Now on to sequencing. The first example will be a very simple positioning sequence. Step 1 is an absolute move to zero. Then after one second, step 2 is a relative move in reverse. This motion sequence will be accomplished using the following process. First, build the sequence table. Then use sequence test to be sure it works properly. And finally, use the MSQR AOI in RS Logics to initiate the sequence from the PLC. Under sequence, start with step one. Items under before the move can be left blank for now. Under executing the move, choose move type absolute. Enter the profile parameters for XL, D cell, position, and speed. And comment absolute position zero. Under after the move, check the box delay for 1000 milliseconds. Under branching, the field for otherwise jump to step can be changed from end to any other step number. Enter two. Now to build step two. To save time, copy step one, and on step two, paste. Change the move type to relative and distance to negative 50. To move in reverse, the relative distance must be negative. The move time is calculated for reference, and comment as relative reverse. Then select jump to step, as end sequence. Leave the other options blank for now and file save. To test the sequence, go to test run, sequence test, test mode enabled, turn on test mode, and send to Sigma logic axis. Connection status sending appears at the bottom. When sending is complete, click servo enable. and enter starting step one and use the start sequence button. The active sequence step is highlighted in the sequence test. I'll run it again.
when the move sequence works as expected, uncheck test mode enabled, turn off test mode, and use the motion sequence run add-on instruction in RS Logix. This example uses RS Logix 5000 version 20. In the RS Logix software environment, Yaskawa claims expertise only in the functionality of our AOIs and in the configuration of the Ethernet IP connection to the Sigma Logic. This is not training on RS Logix or application programming. All RS Logix programming and networking questions should be directed to Rockwell. This example simply has a contact in front of the MSQR instruction, which has been loaded with variables. First, enable the servo with MSO. In motion sequence run, set the step number to 1 and the other parameters to 0. Activate the AOI and motion begins. The AOI displays the current step. The sequence can be paused, resumed, or canceled immediately as long as the AOI remains active. Motion Sequence Edit can be used to temporarily change the speed and distance of any existing step. As an example, increase the speed and distance of step 2 to 80 mm at 60 mm per second. Sequence Edit Type is 3 to change both. Step number is 2. Speed is 60 and distance is 80. Now toggle the bit to execute MSQE and restart the sequence with MSQR. The relative move is now 80 millimeters forward instead of 50 millimeters reverse. Note that this is a temporary change. The distance and speed stored in the sequence table will be loaded the next time the unit is powered up. This is the basic process to implement a sequence table in Sigma Logic. Now follow the same process to implement a more complex sequence, which includes absolute, relative, and registration move, with an optional branching to a blended move. This example will also make use of flags to control sequence timing between the Sigma Logic the PLC, and physical I.O. In LogicWorks sequence, the absolute and relative moves already exist. However, the step 2 relative move must wait for physical input DI0. Under Before the Move, check Wait for Flag and pick Flag 65, CN13 DI0 to reach rising edge. Update branching to jump to step 3. Now on to step 3, the registration move. Registration means the servo stops an exact registration distance past the captured position. The position is captured when a high speed input is turned on. This input can be monitored under Monitor, Status and I.O. CN1, SI4, flag 85, wired to connector CN1, pin 10. Under Sequence, step 3, set move type to relative with registration and enter the move parameters for XL, D cell, distance, and speed. The nominal distance is 110 millimeters but the sensor is placed when exactly 20 mm distance remains. The registration speed will be faster in this example, so enter 30. The timing diagram also shows to set flag 33 during the move. Under Before the Move, check Set Flag and open the dialog to go to flag 33. Rename the description to STS Reg Progress. Double-click the flag number to select, and set flag to on. Under After the Move, set the same flag 33 to off. When an Ethernet IP status flag such as this one is turned on and off by the Sigma Logic, 
it can only be read by the PLC. It cannot be changed by the PLC. And add delay for 1000 milliseconds. This step will use branching to optionally start the final blended move sequence if flag 1 is on. Under branching, check if flag and on flag 1, name it command underscore blend and double click the number to select. Branching now reads if flag 1 is select on. Jump to sequence step 1, the absolute move. This will cause the absolute move to execute again. Comment this step as registration. Back to step 1. Under branching, again check if flag 1 is on. Jump to sequence step 4, which will be the blended move. And notice that before the absolute move, flag 73 is set to off. On to step 4. Choose move type blended move. The blended move uses up two consecutive steps, 4 and 5. Continue to accept the warning. Before the move, check set flag and choose flag 73 CN13DO0 set to on. Set X cell and D cell. The absolute position for the first half of the move is 20 millimeters and speed of 10 millimeters per second. Comment as blend A. Then in step 5, set X cell and D cell. The final stopping position is 40 millimeters at a speed of 5 millimeters per second. And comment as blend B. While the graphic shows speed B is slower, a faster speed can also be used. Take care to use absolute positions with the blend and move profile, not distances. Because of this, it is possible for the second half of the blended move to go in reverse. After the move, delay for 1000 milliseconds. Save this work as sequence table underscore advanced. Now to test the sequence. In test run, sequence test, enable test mode, enable the servo and use send to sigma logic axis. When sending completes, enter starting step one and start the sequence. The axis first moves to position zero. Now step 2 is active and it is waiting for flag 65 rising edge. Use the next step button to advance past the wait for flag condition. The reverse relative move takes place. Then the registration move. Since the blended move depends on a conditional branch, this will be tested individually. Use motor test to go to target position 0. In sequence test, set the starting step 4 and start sequence. When the move sequence works as expected, uncheck test mode enabled and turn off test mode. In RS logics, the MSQR instruction will be used again. The flags are also integrated into the program. These flags can be found in the watch page under the axis structure, which in this example was named Yaskawa servo underscore one. Find the command flags by expanding the axis structure, expand O for outputs, find flag command bits 1 and 2, and expand again. Each bit is a flag, where bit 0 controls flag 1, bit 1 controls flag 2, and so on. 
Turn on flag bits 2, 3, and 4 in the PLC. Now in LogicWorks Monitor, status and IO shows flags 3, 4, and 5 are on. This program has a simple ladder rung to command flag 1, which is output flag command 1, bit 0. Flags 33 through 64 are commanded through flag command bits 2. The status of these SAM flags can be read as inputs to the axis structure. Expand Yaskawa servo underscore 1, I for inputs, find flag status bit 1 and 2, and expand. In this program, status flag 33 is written by the Sigma logic. It appears as input flag status 2, bit 0. Now let's run the sequence table. First, enable the servo with MSO. Start the sequence at step 1. And the absolute move takes place. LogicWorks shows it's waiting for flag 65 input 0. And monitor status and I.O. shows the flag is off. I'll flip the switch for DI0. and the sequence continues with the relative move. Moving on to the registration move and ending. Now run the sequence again and branch to the blended move using flag one. Before switching on DI zero, toggle command flag one. I'll flip the switch for DI0. Here's the registration move. Back to zero. And the blended move fast and slow. Let's run that again one more time. I'll flip the switch for DI0. Thanks for watching this video and remember yaskawa.com slash sigmalogic for videos, documents, software, firmware, AOIs, and more.